it can be really nerve-wracking to install Rancher RKE2 on your Linux machine and can be quite frustrating at times. Let me show you some simple steps on how you can set up and install Rancher RKE2 on your Linux machine. What I have here is four Linux VMs here. I'm running Ubuntu 24.03 on all four of them. And these are the appropriate IP address for each of these VM here. Now, the first three uh, VM, this one, this one, and this one are going to be my control node. And the last one here is going to be my worker node. So, and also what I've done here is I've logged in as a super user on all the VMs so that I can execute system commands on the uh, on my Linux machine. So first thing I have to do is to, of course, install the system update on all the four uh, VMs like this. This first few steps will be a prerequisite to installing your Rancher RKE2 here. So once the installation is complete, you're going to install the uh, dependency for the Rancher on all the four VMs again using these commands here. And after that, we're going to turn on the time synchronization on all four of them so that the times are always synchronized. And then disable the swap on all four VMs like this. And then after that, we're going to load the kernel module using these two commands on all four VM like this. As you can see, I'm going really fast. Uh, don't worry, all the commands will be on the description of the video if you're interested to just copy and paste it. Next, we're going to run the system parameter here, system CTL parameters using this command here like this, on, again, on all four VMs like this. And then basically load and apply system-wise system CTL configuration file using this command like this. So at this point, we are done installing and configuring all the prerequisite software on all four VM on your Linux machine. Now, this, the next few steps are going to be different between control nodes and worker nodes. Let's start off with the control node. You're going to basically run this command on all the control nodes. So essentially what this is going to do is to, it's going to download uh, latest RKE2 installation file and then basically uh, run the installation script using unzipping the tarball and, and all that stuff. Once that's done, we're going to enable the RKE2 service using this command again on all three control nodes. Now let's focus on getting our worker node set up. We're going to run the same curl command as our control node, but this time around, when you do a system CTL enable, you're going to basically say RKE2 agent compared to RKE2 service like what we've been running just now. As you can see, previously we ran RKE2 server service on all three of them. But this one for the agent, we're going to say RKE2 agent because this is our worker node and hit enter. Now that concludes the RKE2 setup and installation. Next, we're going to have to conf uh, set up the configuration file. So if you like a predefined token, on your configuration file, all you have to do is basically, let me clear the screen here so it's a bit cleaner because the configuration file can be a bit cluttery. So on the controls uh, node one, you're gonna paste like that with a fixed token as you can see. And the IP address, this one here, belongs to the IP address of control node one. And then for control node two, you're gonna do the same thing, same command here. As you can see that the token is fixed, Control node 3, as you can see, the token is fixed. And then for con for the worker node, I'm sorry, you're going to use this. Again, the token is fixed. But if you don't want to create a predefined token and you want Rancher RKE2 to actually generate a token for you, these are the steps you're going to have to take. I'm going to control C or break out of it and clear my screen here. So the first step is to basically use this command. What this does is that it creates a Rancher and RK2 directory inside the etc folder. And then inside there, you'll create a config.yaml file. And the content of the config.yaml file is all this. These are the three IP address for your control node. And these are the host name for the three uh, control nodes here. And this node IP is your local IP address of control node one. 
and then as you can see it does not have an entry for token like before so when you do that we assign the token uh, to be used would be the the random token that the control node generates when you start the RKE2 service. I'm going to hit enter here and if you do ls minus al and go ahead and uh, look into this particular directory like that, you can see that the config file is created with this content in here. So next thing what you do is that basically launch your RKE2 server services on your control node 1. And once the service is started, you can check its status by using the system CCL status the service name and you should see the status as active and running. I press Ctrl C to exit out of it. Now to get a token uh, from your control node one, simply use this command and hit enter and it will give you the token for control node one. Now you're going to go ahead and copy this on your clipboard like this and basically go over to your control node two and paste this configuration here. What I've done here is that the server is pointing to control node one's IP address and the token I've copied from whatever token that the control node one have specified and I've just pasted it in here. And again, the TLS SAN is the same set of setup that we had on control node one. But the difference here is that the IP address here pertains to the IP address of control node two here. Go ahead and hit enter and launch the RKE2 server service using the systemctl command. Once the service is started, we can check the status of the service using the system, CTL status, and the service name, and it should show as active and running. Now press Ctrl C to exit out of it. And now let's go over to the control node number three here and basically paste this command. What I've done here again, pointing to the control node one IP address and the token from control node one, and then the series of IP address for all the control nodes followed by the local IP address and hit enter. And if you're wondering how to find the IP address of your control node, simply type IP space ADDR like this, and you'll see that the IP address here have to match with this IP address here. Go ahead and start your RKE2 service using this command. Once the service is running, you can use this command to check its status. Oops, I've entered the wrong. I'm not after the agent. I'm after the service like this and hit enter. And you should see the status as active and running. Next, we'll work on the worker node. Simply paste this command here. Again, it's going to create a rancher RKE directory under the etc directory and create a config YAML file. And the content of the YAML file is all this. This is the IP address of your control node one. And the token is again, from control node one that we got from our previous uh, query. Now for the node IP, this is the IP is of the local worker node itself. Hit enter. And once you get that, we're gonna launch our uh, RKE2 agent services here. One thing to take away from this is that this we are launching as RKE2 agent service and the other two we are launching it as RKE2 server service and hit enter. And then let's determine the status of my RKE2 agent using this command here and hit enter. It should show as active and running like this. Let's run a kubectl command to make sure that we see all the nodes that has been configured. Let's go over to any of the control nodes and enter the following command and hit enter. As you can see, you'll see all the four nodes that we have installed and configured. You can see the first three is the control uh, node, which is one, two, three. And the last one is your worker node. As you can see, it's not ready yet. Uh, give it a few moments. This will turn to ready. And for the worker node, this has always been none for me. I'm not too sure what the reason is. If you do know the reason, please uh, leave a comment on the comment section of the video. And maybe I'll learn something from you. As you can see, in order to access the kubectl command, you got to enter the whole directory. This means that the path has not been set up correctly yet. And at the same time, if you don't enter the cube config location, this kubectl command won't work. Let's uh, work on that. The first thing we'll do is to create a symlink using this command here like this. Basically, it creates a, a symbolic link so that you don't have to enter the whole entourage of the directory to get access to kubectl. Next, we'll create an environment variable to the uh, RKE2 uh, YAML file like this. Now at this point, if you just simply enter a kubectl command like this without having to enter the whole directory in it and hit enter, 
the command works. I can also show you with IP address just to make sure that it works. And let's say if you want to check the nodes locally on control node, you can simply type that. Let's have a quick look at the ports and make sure all the ports are running with this command here and hit enter. You can see everything is running and completed. So let me clear the screen like that for now. And let's clear this screen here. So at this point of our installation, our Rancher Management UI uh, is not installed into our RKE2 cluster. So if you go open your browser and go to that particular directory or rather URL, you will not be able to access any of the Rancher's uh, services via the browser. What we have to do is to install a Rancher Management service. Let's go back to our SSH here. The first thing we'll do is to install helm and using this command here now the next few commands that i'm going to execute you only need to execute in one of the control node you don't have to execute in all the control node or the worker node for the matter of fact and then the next three commands will actually add a helm repository to your rke2 cluster here once you get these messages we're going to install the cert manager hit enter and also make sure that the cert manager is all ready to go and install correctly. Next, we'll install the rancher itself onto our RKE2 cluster using the following command. Over here, you can customize a few things here. First of all, the host name is your domain name itself. I've called mine as ranchercybernetics.com. And after that, I've got three replicas of it. So which means there's three containers or deployment uh, in the words of Rancher. And then the password or the bootstrap password would be Robbie123. And if you hit enter, the Rancher will be installed. And if it's successful, you should be getting something like this. Let's do a quick check by using this command called CTL. Uh, with the namespace, namespace of cattle system get pods like this, you should see something like this. Right now, the rancher is just been created. It's been running for 17 seconds and the container creating is your status right now. You're going to have to wait until it turns to running. Approximately, based on my setup here, it takes about anywhere from two to three minutes and I'll just give it a few moments here and be right back. I think I gave it a pretty solid two to three minutes here. Let's look at the status of our pods here. You can see I've been running for four minutes. I was wrong actually. Four minutes and it's been uh, showing as running. Let's have a quick look at the services using this command here with the namespace of cattle system and hit enter. You should see something like that in some capacity. What you do next is first you're going to go and open a notepad. I'm going to close my notepad here. Go system and type notepad. This is on a Windows computer where you'll be accessing the uh, web page or the Rancher web page from right click on the notepad, run as administrator. Once that's get launched, go to file and open and you're going to navigate to this directory called Windows System32 driver etc. In here, you'll find a, direct, a file called host. You're going to go to all files like this and then make the host file visible. You click on it and click on OK. Again, make sure that you're opening a notepad as an administrator. If you don't do that, uh, you can't really save this file because this is a system file. Next, we're going to add a new line here. This is the IP address of my control node one. And this is the domain name that I've installed my Rancher with. It's going to be called ranchercybernetics.com. I'm going to copy this on a clipboard and go ahead and save this file on my host file. And you can minimize or close this. Next, you're going to go to your browser and basically enter HTTPS colon slash slash and the same domain name that you have assigned when you install your Rancher and hit enter. And over here, it's going to come up with this, mainly because I don't have a proper certificate for this demonstration. If you do have a HTTPS certificate, this message will never appear. But this is a test system. I'm going to go ahead and click on advance and then proceed to rancher.cybernetics.com as unsafe and click on this hyperlink here. And when you click on this hyperlink in a few moments, you'll come up to this web page here. The password here is the password that you assign when you install your Rancher, the bootstrap password. Mine was Robbie123. 
but for some weird reason if you forgot your password you can still recover the password using the following command on any of your control node here i'm going to clear my screen here and if you are typing this pass uh, this url or rather this command kubectl command hit enter it will actually tell you your password for your bootstrap and then after that you can go to your rancher here enter your password you can actually show hide like this and then click on login with local user and you'll be brought to this web page here and basically verifying that this is your domain name and click on by checking this you accept the user and licensing agreement and so on and click OK and then after that your RKE cluster is visible for you to work on and from here on you know exactly what to do if you like my video please like and subscribe other than that you have a good day